गुजरात में हार का डर इतना सता रहा है रातों की नींद हराम हो गई है भाजपाइयों की उनके पास एक काम है सिर्फ कैसे आम आदमी पार्टी के नेताओं का उत्पीड़न करना है जेल में डालना है Good evening. You're watching the Sunday edition of the Explosive Weekend Debate with me, Poonam Burde. Now, the Delhi Excise Policy continues to haunt the Aam Aadmi Party and the Delhi government. Delhi's Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia was served summons by the CBI today for him to appear before them at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Now, Kejriwal's deputy Manish Sisodia was named as accused number one in the FIR that was filed in this particular case on the 17th of August. He has been raided in the past. His bank lockers have been checked in the past, but this is the first time that he has been summoned for questioning. He is also the first politician who will be examined by the agency, despite there being several arrests in the case. Now, Manish Sisodia was quick to offer his full cooperation to the agency, but not before reminding them that there was no proof that was found against him during any of those raids. Truth shall prevail, he declared on social media. His colleague, his close aide, and the chief minister of the national capital likened Manish Sisodia to modern-day Bhagat Singh. No jail time would deter his intentions, tweeted Kejriwal. He said, after 75 years, the country got an education minister who has given good education to the poor. and that's why he is being targeted well the aam aadmi party is putting up a brave face but the political ramifications of this could be big and that's exactly what the bjp is hoping to encash in on listen in to how the political fireworks played out kejriwal ji ki sarkar rahi us sarkar ne kis tarike se yahan par ghotale pe ghotala kiya आज केजरीवाल की सरकार घोटालों की सरकार बन गई है केजरीवाल तुमने दिल्ली का किया बेहाल और तुम्हें अब जाना होगा और यहां पर भारतीय जनता पार्टी को आना होगा इस बात की हमको तैयारी भारतीय जनता पार्टी करना क्या चाह रही है गुजरात में हार का डर इतना सता रहा है रातों की नींद हराम हो गई है भाजपाइयों की उनके पास एक काम है सिर्फ कैसे आम आदमी पार्टी के नेताओं का उत्पीड़न करना है जेल में डालना है मैं बीजेपी के नेताओं से साफ तौर पे कहना चाहता हूं तुम्हारी इस हताशा में की गई कार्रवाइयों से ये जेल में डालने से आम आदमी पार्टी के नेता डरने और रुकने वाले नहीं आम आदमी पार्टी और भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सीधी टक्कर है गुजरात में और गुजरात का चुनाव हम लोग जीतेंगे Now before I open this up I just want to put this in perspective for our viewers so why exactly this is important it's very much a litmus test for the Aam Aadmi Party for team Kejriwal there are at least five specific reasons why that is the case the first big reason is that Arvind Kejriwal and the Aam Aadmi Party began their political journey on the anti corruption plank so for them to be above board as far as corruption and graft is concerned is extremely important Reason number 2 is the Aam Aadmi Party actually rode to power on the promise of clean governance here in the national capital then in Punjab as well. Reason number 3 is that even Aam Aadmi Party's uh, chief Arvind Kejriwal his own mentor someone he worked with as far as India against corruption was concerned his mentor Anna Hazare has in the recent past raised several times of how there is lack of transparency and how Arvind Kejriwal has been going back on his promise. Reason number 4 is that a top minister in the national capital Satyendra Jain is in jail. There are several other MLAs of the Aam Aadmi Party that are under the scanner of multiple agencies. And the biggest reason as far as the political ramifications go is that at least in two states where Aam Aadmi Party hopes to make a dent politically, they go to elections not too long after. So there is a lot at stake for the Aam Aadmi Party, there is also a lot at stake for its political rivals. is this questioning and the summons to manish sisodia political or is it about probity and propriety to discuss that 
BJP spokesperson Harish Khurana now joins me on this broadcast. Amani Party spokesperson Priyanka Kakkar also with me. Senior editor of Suraj Magazine Tushar Gupta, Akhil Khan, political analyst, and Omesh Segal, former chief secretary of Delhi, also joining me on this broadcast. But I'd like to begin with you, Priyanka Kakkar. Why link it to elections? The probe in this case has been on. The FIR was filed in the seven on the seventeenth of August. Several arrests have been made so far. Several people linked to the Delhi government. It's due course of action, some would say, that Manish Sodia, who was the man in charge of this particular policy, which now stands withdrawn, be questioned. Uh, good evening to all of you. Why this is linked with the politics is because you know Manish had several uh, several road shows lined up till the end of October in Gujarat. and that was to hamper those road shows because even today we saw in bhavnagar we saw about a 75000 plus crowd in bhavnagar in gujarat and uh, we are seeing the ramifications here in form of this policy this is a very progressive policy when implemented in punjab it has earned a revenue of 4000 crores in the first 6 months of implementation also uh, the 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 rhetoric of the bjp is laughable why i say this is you know they are they want to manage the optics and call aam aadmi party a corrupt party as the bjp and why i say this is because you know after giving our citizens in this in these times of high inflation after giving our citizens free electricity free water free a uh, school free education free buzurgo ko teerth yatra free bus yatra for women we are still presenting a surplus budget and our inflation compared to all other states in the country are controlled at a 4% whereas in gujarat for example it is double than a double inflation than delhi it is at 8% so that is the problem you know which is a corrupt government a government which is able to give so many services free to its citizens and which has implemented the same policy in punjab and earned a revenue of 6 crores before i get in the bjp government... spokesperson in i just want to ask you one question because you cite the example of punjab and how it has been a success there then why did you withdraw the policy in delhi we had to withdraw it owing to several reasons there were certain conditions imposed just on the last date when uh, the policy was to be implemented which could not be fulfilled by people who had already submitted already uh, 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 been successful in the auctioneering process so For it was just technicalities it. so it was just technicalities there was nothing Correct. amiss Yes, and the same policy is in operation in Punjab, and we are earning a revenue surplus. There are already four thousand crores we've earned in the first six months. There, there, there is no bigger proof. Right. So it was just technicalities, which is why it was withdrawn. The fact that it actually is a success in Punjab goes on to show that there was everything was above board. Harish Kurana, do you buy that argument? See, uh, every time when they have been questioned or uh, some radar has been taken in in, in CBI. they hide it behind the bechara politics and uh, uh, always say there is a victim card is uh, playing on my question directly to the aam aadmi party people the same rhetoric was been said uh, when when uh, sarinder jain was been arrested himachal elections he has been made a prabhari so bjp has got afraid since last 4 months he has been arrested he has been jailed by the order of the court not by the order of cbi or or uh, any ed point number 1 point number 2 uh, you are right Uh, your government clean government has gone for a toss actually for a toss and anti corruption is just a myth now the reason behind what i am telling you is the reason is one of the minister mr satyendra jain is in jail second one of the top top minister who had a serious serious allegation on a on a liquor scam in spite of giving an answers they go to gujarat they go to himachal or they go they talk uh, any anything else but not about what the liquor scare scam is and what the people are asking the questions questions are point number 1 when the wholesale business was been not been allowed to give to the private sector why have you given to a private people point number 1 point number 2 when retail when business should be given through lottery system why have you given to your your liquor mafia friends third and the most importantly when the when the wholesale commission was just 2% why have you raised to 12% this is a clear cut Right. So three specific questions there being put by the BJP, and before I open this up, a uh, quick rebuttal, Ms. Kakar. Uh, I will see when he spoke about why is it to, from two to twelve percent. We are now taking a hefty license fee from the vendors instead of taking 
um, uh, taking any money on the sales. The previous policy was that, you know, uh, de depending on the sales, you were supposed to give to the government and there was a lot of corruption in the system. So to remove that element of corruption, we made sure that we take a hefty license fee first and there is no, uh, there is no, we don't take 2%, we take see, that 12%, like he says, and then we don't take any money in the sale. We have no business in the sales of the liquor. One. Secondly, you know, if it is about liquor, uh, the question must be asked of BJP, don't they see the 10,000 crore liquor trade being illicitly run in Gujarat in a dry state? How is that happening? If they're so bothered about liquor and they're so bothered about the liquor policy, what is happening in Gujarat? There is no policy. People are dying of spurious liquor, so no question should be asked of them. Can I, can I revert for two Yes, Mr. Ten Khurana, go ahead. Yes. See, uh, she has not understood what, the, what <clears throat> BJP is asking. Wholesale commission was just 2%. You have raised it to 12% because 6% has to be given in cash to uh, by, by, by those liquor wholesale mafias. Try to, answering to, to, to on Gujarat. Government. No. How is it running a liquor, I, illegal trade? I'm not interfering you. In Why are you getting panic? Why are you getting I'm panic? I'm not getting panic, sir. I'm asking you a question. Country, because the there's no debate see, on this. The whole country Please see, answer. The whole country. The CBI can't see a I need your intervention, ma'am. Poonam, I need your intervention. I'm not smoking in, in right, the, in so the, the Right, so questions, answers, they're coming in from both sides. Allegations, see, counter allegations. My, my allegation, see, just 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds. Yes, go ahead. She's not, she not giving a specific answer. And she's talking about Gujarat. Are, Baba, Gujarat, we are talking over here about the debate on liquor scam in Delhi. Every time when we right, ask... Right, and it's interesting you, that Gujarat keeps coming up, Tushar Gupta, yeah. isn't it? Because... Uh, Yes, there are elections around the corner and yes, the Ahmadmi party is going all out there wanting to be uh, uh, the kingmaker or someone uh, who pushes the Congress out of the picture at least as far as uh, electoral uh, politics is concerned. It's also interesting how the Aam Aadmi Party says that it's not just the summoning or questioning of uh, Man Manish Sodia tomorrow, he's going to be arrested. It somehow seems that they're banking on him being arrested so that they can ride the sympathy wave as far as Gujarat is concerned. Good evening, Poonam. You know, Poonam, I've always believed that the sophologists of the Aam Aadmi Party or the sophologists they consult probably come from another universe. Because in 2014, they were supposed to win 400 Lok Sabha seats. They won four. In 2019, they were supposed to emerge as the kingmakers. They won a single Lok Sabha seat, which they recently lost. So I don't understand where this entire argument of Aap becoming the kingmaker in Gujarat comes from. To be a kingmaker, you need to be at least a pawn on the chessboard. Aam Aadmi Party is nowhere. It would be a great uh, optimism from me if I said they'll at least hit a 10% vote share. So this thing all about Gujarat and Sisodia, that's suspicious. That's all just rhetoric and just that's all just attention-grabbing noise. That's point number one. Point number two, this Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson here has a lot to say about the achievements of the Aam Aadmi Party. My simple question is again that. You say your excise policy was withdrawn for technicalities. Fair enough, a lot of policies are withdrawn for technicalities. The government wants to rethink them. They want to bring it back with improvements. My simple question is, where was this thought process before the investigation was ordered? Where was this thought process when you withdrew the excise policy less than 24 hours after the investigation was ordered? Today, you're remembering the technicalities while before the investigation was ordered, you were hailing it as the world's best excise policy. Point number three, you point out Punjab that the same excise policy has worked wonders in Punjab. I give it to you. But the Punjab debt, which is around 2.7 lakh crore, is not going to be served by your excise policy. Where's the real plan? Because in the second month of his CM ship, Bhagwant Man was in the center asking for 50,000 crores over the next two years. So that still doesn't answer the question. Point number four, Priyanka went on a long uh, spree about what all the Aam Aadmi Party has achieved in Delhi over the last eight years. Again, my simple point, it was Arvind Kejriwal who was absent from Delhi during the first wave and during the Delta wave when we had severe oxygen cylinder problems in Delhi. So I want to discount all the Aam Aadmi Party achievements there and then. Nevertheless, even if I were to give Priyanka the benefit of doubt, my simple question is that, that you say you have nothing to hide. You say you're not corrupt. You say there have been hundreds of raids and nothing has been found. No money has been found. Then this is your moment to shine for the Gujarat election then this is your moment to prove that yes we were right about the ed rates this is how bgp were targeting us please go vote out for us this is your moment to shine why are you being apologetic why are you being rattled that's my simple question right and i'd like akhil khan to take that question as well we've seen the kind of uh, uh, political fireworks that have erupted over this particular case with every single arrest today we had uh, the chief minister of delhi the convener of the amadmi party likened satendra jain and uh, mani sisodia to modern day bhagat singhs Satendra Jain has been in jail since May this year. He has been denied bail by the courts of this country. 
uh, you see if you see the history of uh, our political uh, uh, india's political history then you will find that no miss uh, nowhere in this history that you will find uh, the ruling party has become so much worried of a particular election and uh, because of these things they are doing uh, all kind of this uh, nonsense thing you see in 2018 cbi uh, has been uh, withdrawn with that um, is their uh, uh, discretionary power to do any kind of uh, investigation against anybody was withdrawn in 2018 because of uh, uh, insistence of mr modi and only when bjp will tell then only cbi will inquire this is the biggest uh, uh, setback for uh, cbi and credibility also now uh, tell me uh, over the years over the years bhartiya janta party has become bhartiya jhoot party it has become bhrashtiya janta party and now it has become bhayankar jhoot party moving towards bhayanak jhoot party mr khan it's one thing to call names to any other party but that's really not the point of the discussion right now this is a bhartiya right illiterate party also now mr khan the point of the discussion right now is yes, about manish sisodia and the excise policy there is an fir he is named in the fir there are yes. multiple allegations against him several of his associates are in jail as we speak several of the people that he was dealing with as the man in charge of that particular policy if the due course of action leads to him being questioned and if the aam aadmi party and sisodia himself feel that he is innocent then why not okay. face the agency let law take its course okay 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 satyan jain has been uh, put under arrest you see and when uh, judge was hearing uh, cbi's plea they uh, judge asked what is the proof you have show us the fact they are not able to uh, show any kind of fact the court has also denied putting, him bail for the last uh, four months different sir. kind of allegations continuously the court has and also denied him bail BJP for the last four said, months change this judge he is not understanding you see they, the satendra jain council the also see, wanted a change they, they, they of judge they are trying to manipulate the court also please so please that's a very me, big allegation let, let that you are making me, it's one thing please. it's one thing to take pot shots yes, at political rivals but to question the judiciary the same judiciary that you want to move for relief You, you want can, relief from the can, same court, uh, but when it does not so go your reports. way, but that when I'm, it does not go your you, way, you want I to question the, the judiciary of this country. Of this And Priyanka Gandhi, I, I want to get you in. It's the same court that you want you, your leaders want to go to for relief. If it does not go your way, no, then the courts change. are corrupt. Judge. The courts are behaving Poonam at the behest of the BJP. Is that a right Poonam allegation ji. to make? Poonam ji, nobody made that allegation, and it is incorrect to suggest anybody made that allegation. The allegation that even the uh, even Khan Sahab was suggesting, and which is correct, is that when the court repeatedly asked ED, "Show us where the criminality is," they moved an application to change the judge. It is a fact. Nobody is questioning the. You see, the nobody is questioning the judiciary. Now, this is the. ED is behavior we are questioning ED we are question ED because the conviction rate of CBI ED has been under 0.5% so abysmal we we are questioning the agencies because there is no investigation on multiple scams which come out against but against the BJP government like i mentioned the Gujarat liquor scam which has been happening for ages no agency is questioning there how are they making who is making 10000 crore and how are people dying hundreds of people dying with consum right. consumption of ill, Ill spurious liquor nobody is questioning why is there is no inquiry in the madhya pradesh cag report has mentioned that there is a scam under the madhya pradesh government or in the mid day meal scam there is no inquiry there are five complaints pending on operation lotus that you know uh, that bjp indulge in kharid right and i see harish khurana smiling there but mr khurana i want you want you to answer this as well can you deny that the conviction rate of both the cbi and the ed are not impressive see my only point is they are making lot of allegations of ed and cbi in regarding satyendra jain case but till now uh, court has not given him the bail why i'm telling If you, you why have... because you but there are questions being asked Baba. of the enforcement directorate as well baba can you deny the conviction let rate me, is supremely low as far as the enforcement directorate is concerned let let me let me let me that is one of the reasons why political witchcraft and vendetta say, is an allegation that the bjp and the agency is faced today it's very easy to allegate anybody but we should understand the law will take their own course priyanka kakkar is allegating lot of things about the uh, lot of government if you have got the proof why don't you go in the court and, and say ki you have believe in the court na why don't you go in and you have a proof na give the give the, the uh, proof to, to the court that cbi is not working it is not working you will not do that because your habit is just to allegate the people and run away that's it your your 
agenda shoot and scoot or political vendetta the argument the debate over that remains as open as it gets and even as the political war of words go on i want to get in uh, mr umesh segal i apologize for not coming to you uh, sooner and you've been patiently waiting on but you've been a former chief secretary of delhi you know the inner workings of how this exactly works as far as this particular uh, or this alleged scam goes is it possible that manish sisodia did not know that there was something that was amiss that there were uh, crores of money that was moving in and around in this particular uh, policy under his nose and he didn't know is it possible well it is possible i won't say it is not possible it is possible the point is that there is an fir fir means there is a complaint that is that is all fir doesn't mean there is a prima facie case now i think the cbi is doing the right thing after raids in xyz they have uh, examined a lot of people now finally they 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 have a system in the, in the crpc that you have to examine the accused before you start arresting or you start filing the charge sheet now that they are doing tomorrow that does not mean that they have proof what it means is that maybe prime of sci they have a few questions to ask him and these questions will answers to those questions will depend if the cbi comes to a conclusion or not now the cbi is an investigating agency so it has a right to investigate <coughs> it has a right to come to a conclusion and it has a right to file the charge sheet but cbi operates under the, under the law and they have their own uh, systems uh, laid down so they have to follow their system when it is a corruption case they have to find out number one where are my assets have my assets gone up since i was in power or have they gone down or or what they so raids and all are, are these are you call them raids actually these are not raids these are actually inspections right. all you do is you inspect something and right. that also with the orders of the court and also he is being Now, examined I, tomorrow not I'm necessarily the question i i i no it he will be questioned but that doesn't necessarily mean that he will be arrested if the cbi comes to a conclusion then mind you that conclusion will have to be reached by their director the the he may be a dsp or a dig or some lower level guy would be questioning him but it is the the director himself who will decide and mind you directors is appointed by a committee headed by the chief justice of india so it is not a small committee which has appointed him now he is this supposed to be independent now the arrest will be made the charge sheet will be filed after they take his approval so i don't think we should worry too much right and the aam aadmi party should worry too much at this stage but prime of sai if you ask me the excise policy was wrong i won't say it was corrupt i will say it was wrong because it led to 80% increase in bottles and a 50% decrease in revenue any right. policy which which is which you sale is more and your income goes down and then you keep on examining examples of punjab and gujarat that right. help you so there was you something on this as far as the policy is concerned I which is also why it was withdrawn based on technicalities is what the aam aadmi party concedes to whether or not there was a scam whether or not there were alleged uh, irregularities all of that I, is I, going I, to be I under investigation you, uh, i apologize to all my panelists because i'm running out of time and i really need to end this here but i thank you all for joining me here the debate over that will continue even as the aam aadmi party's uh, leader and uh, deputy chief minister of delhi faces the cbi tomorrow and we'll be following all of that very closely before now shifting focus to news coming in from jammu and kashmir where protests have broken out over the death of 43 year old puran krishan bhat that who was killed yesterday candlelight marches were held at several places in kashmir valley in the protest against the killing against pakistan protests were held in srinagar Baramulla, Bandipur, Anantnag, Gandharbal, and Shopian districts. Thousands of mourners joined Bhat's family to not only bid him a tearful adieu, but also to demand justice for his family, to demand safety for all of those minority community members who continue to live in the Kashmir Valley. आप देख रहे हैं कि सैकड़ों की तादाद में यहाँ पे लोग जमा हो चुके हैं और इस कत्ल के खिलाफ यहाँ पे कैंडल मार्च निकाला गया और उसके बाद पूरा मुल एजाज यहाँ पे किया गया है क्योंकि इस एजाज के जरिए यही मैसेज देना चाहता है कि पूरी दुनिया में ये मैसेज जाए कि यहाँ पे जो है पुरमन लोग रहते हैं और किसी के भी आम कत्ल के खिलाफ जो है लोग यहाँ पे खड़े हुए हैं यहाँ पे मुलाजिम जो है डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के बड़े अधिकारी छोटे अधिकारी तमाम डॉक्टर हो इंजीनियर हो सारे लोग यहाँ पे आए हैं और इस पूरा अमल एजाज में शिरकत कर रहे हैं और इनका भी यही कहना है कि यहाँ पे आज जो हम ये मैसेज आम करना चाहते हैं हम 
जो है सिविलियन किलिंग के खिलाफ हम बिल्कुल एकजुट होकर खड़े हुए हैं और आइंदा इस तरह की किलिंग हम नहीं चाहते हैं चाहे पंडित हो मुसलमान हो सिख हो या ईसाई यही एक पैगाम है क्योंकि कश्मीर की कौम है एक पुरान कौम है और ये पुरान कौम यही शुपान से संदेश दे रही है कि हमें किसी भी तरह इस तरह के जो है वारदात मंजूर नहीं है Shifting focus now to news coming in from the Congress camp, and it is polling day tomorrow. As far as the Congress's presidential elections go, the candidate Shashi Tharoor has now made a final appeal on his social media to Congress workers. So listen in to what he had to say. So this is it. Tomorrow morning, many of you are going to wake up to a day where, probably for the first time in all your years as a loyal congressman or woman, you. will have the opportunity to choose the president of your party look by now i'm guessing you already know about my 10 point plan you already know that i hope to decentralize the party you already know that i want to make the party more inclusive and modern yet from the several conversations i've had over the last few days i gather that many of you have not still made up your minds i recognize that while my message of decentralization inclusion and modernization might appeal to you you still have concerns or even hesitation about change in any organization of our size and scale it is natural to have concerns around change and i wanted to address it directly today as i see it the congress party has endured as the important force in indian politics because time and time again when the situation demanded it the congress party was willing to embrace change It's D-Day tomorrow as far as the Tharoor versus Kharge fight is concerned and CNN News 18 will be get you all you getting all of the developments on that for you for now it's a wrap from me on this edition thank you so much for tuning in